PDA is not caused by inadequate parenting or attachment. Oh, this is so important. This is so, so, so important. You know, much of the crisis that we find ourselves in as families and those bottoms that we hit, a lot of it has to do with the parent experience or the family experience. Along the way, I mean, part of my experience as a parent was the trauma of consulting with various other professionals who gave us all different kinds of labels and reasons and a lot of it had to do with blaming me as a parent saying that I was too anxious and I was making my child anxious or I wasn't being hard enough or I wasn't being consistent or I wasn't being flexible enough or I wasn't being a good role model. None of those things had anything to do with it at all. There are so many PDAs who have grown up in homes where they have been nurtured and loved and cared for. Their families have been responsive caregivers. They have been supportive and kind and flexible and accepting. And the children are still PDAs because PDA is a neurobiology. It is a way of being in the world. It is a profile of autism. It is an autistic person. Poor parenting does not cause autism. Poor parenting does not cause PDA. And Let's just dump the whole poor parenting label anyway. But please know, if you are not yet convinced that your child's behavior or their inability to comply with demands or directions or instructions or to ask for help, if you are still not convinced that that is not your fault, stick around because this is so important. We as adults and carers need to be able to sit with our own trauma, our own fear, our own grief, our own sadness and process that for ourselves. And if we're walking around in the world thinking my child could be a different person if I was, or my child could have an easier, better life if I was a better parent, oh, I can't encourage you enough to give that up right now. I really can't. We are all just who we are doing the best with what we have in any given moment.